Hey Geek Girl Diaries fans, it's that time of year again. I've got my Christmas jumper on, I've got my Santa hat on, so it must be Christmas. I've been doing a lot of programming lately and I've been watching a lot of Frozen. And together, my brain has mixed these two worlds and I've decided to make some snowflakes just using some code and my Raspberry Pi. <laughs> In this tutorial, we will make snowflakes with some Python code. Here's an example of the type of thing that you can achieve just by following this tutorial. If you're new to programming, now is a great time to get started. It is Code.org's Hour of Code Week between the 8th of December and the 14th of December this year. And as you can see, their website is full of tutorials to get you started, including this one with frozen characters Elsa and Anna. Using the visual programming language Blockly, you can create some beautiful snowflakes just by connecting blocks. And to begin with, the challenge is to create a line and then an angle with a line followed by a square. I can't deny it, I had a lot of fun doing it. You can create something similar with text-based code just using Turtle and Python using Elsa and Anna too. And that's what we're going to do now. If you're new to Python, you may want to look at these two videos to help you get started. It will teach you how to install Python if you've got a PC or a Mac, but I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi because Python is already installed. Begin by opening the Python shell and then clicking on File and New Window. Next, we're going to save this empty file as snowflake.py and now you're ready to start typing your code. We begin by importing the turtle module that we're going to use in Python to draw our snowflakes. Next, we need to create the screen in which it will draw our snowflake. And then we need to give our turtle a name. So I'm going to call mine Elsa, just like in the activity on the code.org website. To be able to close the window at the end, I'm just going to type this line wn.exit on click, open close brackets, so that I'm able to close the window after it's finished drawing. Now we've completed setting up turtle, we can now type the commands to draw a line. So we simply type elsa.forward, open bracket, 100, close bracket. And this means it will take 100 steps. Now click file, save, followed by run and run module. The turtle screen will appear and a line is drawn by Elsa, our little turtle. Now let's go back to our code and let's add another line underneath that says elsa.write and in brackets 90. And this will turn Elsa our turtle right by 90 degrees. And if we add another forward 100, it will take another 100 steps forward. So let's save this and run it in exactly the same way as we did before to see what happens. We're on our way to making a great square. So let's add the rest of the code to do it. So if a square has four sides, it's going to need four lines of code that say Elsa.forward 100. And we're going to need to turn right three times. So if we type all that code in, save it and run it, we should get a square. That is a successful sequence of code, but really it's inefficient to uh, retype and reuse code over and over again. And actually it's easier if we use a loop instead. So I'm going to type 4i in range 4. And then underneath I'm just going to indent my code by four spaces. So the two lines elsa.forward100 and elsa.write90 are now inside this loop and they will repeat four times, creating a square in exactly the same way as before. And it's a much more efficient way of writing it. Now you're able to create a square, we can go and create some other shapes just by changing the length of the sides or the degrees turn that we make. So here I've made a parallelogram, which is sort of like a wonky diamond. And all I did there was change the right turns to 60 and 120. What happened to my fancy snowflakes, I hear you ask? Well, okay, what we need to do is take our shapes and we need to repeat them inside another loop. So here I'm writing 4i in range, and this time in 10. And everything now needs to be indented, so my loop for my parallelogram needs to be indented and all the code within that, all by four spaces. And I'm just going to add a line at the bottom that says Elsa.write and in brackets 
36. And this is inside the range 10 loop. So let's save that, run it, and let's see what happens now. Okay, we have something that looks much more like a snowflake and much prettier, but the colours are a bit dull. So let's see if we can do something about that. If you go back to your Python code, we're going to add a line that selects a colour for the pen. So the code is elsa.color, and you have to spell colour in the American way. And then in brackets, um, inside a string, we're going to use quotation marks that makes a string, we're going to put the name of the colour. So I've used a nice pale blue here or cyan to create my snowflake. There are other fun ways I can use colours. I could change the background colour. So if we just delete our Elsa colour, I'm going to type wn.bg colour, again the American spelling of colour, and in brackets in my string I'm going to put background colour is grey. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of colours. So I'm going to type colours equals and then a square bracket and then I'm going to type a whole bunch of colours. So I've got cyan in quotation marks with a comma, I've got purple, comma, white, comma, and why not have a blue as well. And then I'm going to close that list with a square bracket. So all of those colours are now stored in a list inside variable colours. Inside my loop, I'm going to type elsa.color, so this will set the pen colour. I'm going to open bracket, and I'm going to type random.choice, open bracket, colours, which is the name of my list, close bracket, and then I have to add another bracket as well. At the top, you've noticed I've imported random as well which allows us to use some of the functionality of that library, which will help us select a colour from that list automatically and at random. And here you can see when I save and run that, the pen colour is changing randomly. So one of those colours from that list is being chosen at random to draw sections of my snowflake. And that's quite fun too. Now you know the basics, let's create some advanced snowflakes. In this file you can see I have much of the same code as before, but what is missing is my sequence of instructions to draw a shape. Instead I have this short sequence that will move the pen to a different starting location. And now I'm going to create my sequence of instructions to draw a shape underneath. So I'm going to start with my loop, and then I'm going to write a few instructions to draw the beginnings of a snowflake shape. Doesn't look like much yet, but it's a starting point. Now I'm going to need to repeat this three times in one line to create one branch of my snowflake. So I'm going to put the loop inside another loop, make sure that my indentation is correct, and then add the lines of code I need for it to move backwards and the turtle be pointing in the right direction. Now we have something looking a little bit more like a snowflake, so you can see there's method in my madness. I've got one branch, and what I want to do next is repeat that branch to create my snowflake. So it makes sense now to start using functions. So I'm going to define my function called branch, and I'm going to put all of the code I've just written inside that function, of course making sure that my indentation is correct. Like before when we wanted to repeat a shape over and over, I needed to add a little extra line to move my turtle around so it will create a spiral. So I've just added two lines for that and then I've called the function underneath, simply by typing the name of the function, which is branch, open and close brackets. And if we test and run that, we can see what happens. We've got the starting point of the snowflake. Now I'm going to create a loop, put my function inside the loop, and I want it to repeat eight times because I'm going to have eight branches on my snowflake. And of course I need to point my turtle in the right direction each time around the loop, so I'm going to put elsa.left45 in brackets for degrees, and now if we save and run it, you will see a beautiful snowflake develop. Very pretty, but let's think back to what we did with colours before, and let's apply it to our snowflake here. So I'm going to call my list of colours using random.choice to generate some funky colours. You 
congratulations on creating your first turtle snowflake. It looks amazing. Now you might be wondering what else you could do. Well, you could create different colours snowflakes. Uh, you could turn this into a sort of interactive card for one of your friends. You could send this code to a friend and get them to play it. If you want to take it further and create the kind of visuals you're seeing on screen now, then I've put this code on GitHub. If you just head over to Miss Philbin, you'll find it on there. But really, the possibilities are endless. Make sure you let me know what you do next with it. Hopefully you've been nice and not naughty and you get everything that's on your Christmas list. Merry Christmas and remember, I'm just a mouse click away. Thank you.